الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله تعالى فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبد ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم لا سهلا إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري رحل العقدة من لساني لفقه قولي We praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We praise Him, we thank Him We seek His forgiveness, we seek His mercy We always need and seek Allah's assistance The best thing we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase us is knowledge Knowledge that will bring us closer to Him Knowledge that will bring us into Jannah Because of our knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Knowledge that will make us understand the purpose of our existence because if human beings don't understand the purpose of their existence, they wasted the most valuable thing Allah has given them, which is soul, life, consciousness. An honor thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمِ We have honored the son of Adam. Everything else is just slave to Allah, willingly and with no choice. Human beings, they get the honor when they became slave to Allah, Willingly, with a choice. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to be good slave and live as a Muslim, die as a Muslim, and be resurrected in the Akhra with the Muslim. I just said, Rabbi Shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri. This was said in Egypt by the Prophet Musa alayhi salatu wa salam. This dua, Prophet Musa said it. It's amazing, what, when did he say it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to him, there is a snake in front of him. <laughs> snake, massive, snake, scary snake, poisonous, with fangs. And Allah says to him, Khudha wa la takhaf. Grab the snake. He grabbed it. None of us will do. <laughs> Allah is telling us to pray and we are not praying. Imagine if he tells us to hold a big you know, poisonous killer snakes. And he grabbed it with saying absolutely nothing. Allah told him, put your hands in your pocket, put it in your sleeve, bring it out, and he brought it out and it's a very different color. The scariest thing that human can see, that the skin changes color, very sick or something, something dangerous going on. He didn't budge, he didn't even worry, he didn't blink an eye. He just put his hand back, he says, oh Allah, subhanAllah, amazing. They say louder. They say louder, speak louder. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think they speak in the room, not that. Okay, I think uh, somebody played with this thing that is the volume and the, in the control. Can you turn the volume up? Yeah. Sorry, sister, inshallah, I'll speak louder. I'll speak louder, inshallah. The brother is just turning the control up. Yes? Now it's better. Sister, can you hear us now? Jazakumullah khair. You better now? Too much. So, we were speaking about the dua, Rabbi Shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri. This is the dua of one of the mighty prophets, Musa. Is one of the five Ulil Azm, five most important prophets in the history of mankind. So we said that Allah commanded him to hold the snake. He did hold it. He just grabbed it. No hesitation, no questions asked, no dua, no Ya Allah, make it safe. No, Allah control it first, send it to, put it to sleep, <laughs> stop it from... He did not say anything. He grabbed the snake. And then Allah changed the color of his hand, of his skin, in front of his eyes, and he wouldn't, you know, 
feel anxious or scared or frightened or ask a question. He didn't ask a question. The third one, when Allah says to him, go and meet Fir'aun, then he asks the question. <laughs> Fir'aun is worse than a poisonous snake. Worse than any disease that they can get. He says, اذهب إلى فرعون. Go to Fir'aun. He says to Allah, رب اشرح لي صدري. What did he say? He says, Ya Allah, I'm absolutely more than happy to do the job, but help me. He did not say help me for the snake. He did not say help me for the color of the skin. But he says, you give me a huge task. If on my, my, on my own, I won't be able to do it. Oh Allah, give me ability. Help me to do it. And that's the life of the Muslim. All of us, all of us should never ever say to Allah, Allah, we can't do it. It's too hard. It's too much. We turn to Allah and say, Ya Allah, it is hard if I do it on my own. I need your help. Please give me some positive feeling about it. Shrah Ali Sandri. That's positive feeling. Feeling hope. And yes, inshallah, it will be easy. Inshallah, it will be good. Inshallah, it will happen. Inshallah, good thing will come out. Well, I steadily amri and make it easy for me because it's not me. It's not my intelligence or intellect or energy or family or relation or money or insurance or all this stuff. It doesn't count when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to them all stop. They will stop. They will not help. So only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can make things easy. So as a believer, we need to turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, Ya Allah, help us. Make good things easy for us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to understand the Quran. <coughs> Last surah was Abasa, Abasa wa Tawalla. And Abasa ended on human running away from each other. Yes, Abasa ended with all the events of the Day of Judgment on earth and human running away from each other. The next surah, at Taqweer, it takes us to the sky. From the events on earth and the day of judgment, suddenly Allah says, but look up, it is Shamsu Kuwira. This bright, beautiful day will be lost. The sun itself will lose its light. So the beautiful day is gone. People say, okay, maybe the night. The second ayah says, وَإِذَا النُّجُومُ انْكَذَرَ And the sparkling, beautiful stars will be down. We also started to fall in another surah. They will lose their job. And then, وَإِذَا الْجِبَانُ سُيِّرَ All this mighty, most powerful structure on earth will be uprooted and sailed away. What is a human being? How powerful is a human being compared to the mountain? Nothing. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that event, that day is massive. وَإِذَا الْعِشَارُ عُطِّلَتْ The most expensive, valuable asset that human can have will be worthless on that day. I said the last time, when the, if the Day of Judgment started tomorrow or on Friday, you will have millions and billions of dollars on the side of the street nobody will even look at. All the flash gadgets and iPhones and expensive cars will be just worthless. Nobody will, there's so much more important events happening, people will, it's like the tsunami. You know when the tsunami hit some countries? There's some very rich people there with very expensive cars and very expensive treasures in their houses. They just run for their life. Everything else is worthless. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us their judgment event is bigger. It's even bigger than whatever we experience or see in this life. Allah then says on that day, وَإِذَا الْوَحُوشُ حُشْرَى The wild beasts, the wild animals will be gathered together. You know, as in our life, we know that animals, no matter what kind of animals they are, they don't like to be gathered together. Even the sheep and cows, they don't like to be together. The farmers need dogs and motorbikes and, you know, sticks to get them together together. Allah says, on a day of judgment, even the wildest animal, the most dangerous animal, the animal that they have instinct that if they see other animals and they focus, they attack, they will be gathered together not worrying about who's next to them. Why? Because there's bigger fear ahead. Nowadays, the deer will see the lion, it will just take off. 
But on the Day of Judgment, we won. We will be gathered together. This is what some scholars say, if you wouldn't imagine it, it happens in, the, in our life if there is a fire in the forest, if the fire in the jungle, or there is a flood. Oh, the animal will just run to a high place. No matter who is next to which. <laughs> and animals like elephant or giraffe or lion or hyena, they just all run together and they won't attack. Because there's a bigger fear. Day of judgment is similar. Or much, much, much bigger. Much bigger. So in Abasa, in the previous surah, we see the people running from each other. But then Allah is saying that the wild animal will run to each other. On the day of judgment, human will run away from each other. But the wildest animal will run to each other. The opposite of the dunya. Different rules, different laws, different regulations coming up. Allah then says, وَإِذَا الْبِحَارُ سُجِّرَةً All the oceans will be on fire. Now maybe you realize what's happening, why the animals are running together, why they're gathered together. If the water in the ocean became like petrol, on fire, <coughs> where to escape, where to run, there's only one place which is safe, which is the hashr, the mahshar, the, day, the qiyamah itself where the throne of Allah will be brought down and the judgment day will start. Nowhere else to go. Nowhere else to go. وَإِذَا النُّفُوسُ زُوِّجَةً when all the souls paired up, they paired up, became like teams. Those who do good deed together, and those who do bad deed together. Those people of fasting, those people of charity, those people of education, teaching, humanitarian efforts, whatever it is, the good deed they do, they will be paired together. This is one opinion. The other opinion is the soul will be paired with the body. And there is another opinion, it says the soul will be paired with the deeds it did. Yeah? And then, وَإِذَا الْمَوْؤُودَةُ سُئِلَتْ When those victims that the Arab used to do, and now in our modern civilization, very similar, a portion will be the same. In my opinion, a portion is like mawuda, killing innocent people. And I said the last time is more than 50 million a portion a year in the world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us and protect us. Amen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that day will not turn to the criminal and talk to them. He will turn to, to the innocent straight away. And ask this, these innocent, this you know, powerless people, powerless human being, this victim that waiting for justice for a long time, Allah will turn to them and say, For what sin? What mistake? They were innocent children. Why did you kill them? وَإِذَا الصُّحُفْ نُشِرَتْ On that day, the records of good deeds and bad deeds, or any act the human being have done, will be brought forward, will be spread out, open, for everyone to see. وَإِذَا السَّمَاءُ كُشِتَتْ Allah says on that day, the, the sky above will turn red. Why? Reflecting what's happening on earth. Fire in the oceans, the whole destruction is going on, and the sun is gone, the stars are gone. Allah says, the sky above now is beautiful. It's calm, it's blue. You look at it and you just enjoy and relax. But the sky in the Akhra will be different, it will be horrifying. Reflecting what's happening on earth, and that's why the next ayah says, وَإِذَا الْجَحِيمُ سُعِرَتْ When the hellfire blazed and roaring sound coming from it. وَإِذَا الْجَنَّةُ أُزْلِفَتْ When the Jannah, paradise, brought near in way of honoring the believer. It's like a ceremony. Brought near to them like a prize-giving time. It's so honoring to them that brought, the believer will not go to it. It will be brought to them. Allah says, well, after all these massive events, عَلِمَتْ نَفْسٌ مَا أَحْدَرَ Allah says, did that, on that day, 
every person know already already know what they will bring to the table. Every one of human being that ever lived knew exactly what they would bring. On that day, they can't go back and say, let me fix this or hide this. There is no way you're going to do it. The scholars say, it's like somebody who did not prepare for an exam. He knows very well if he took the exam, what will happen. They just, no, nobody can tell them, are oh, you going to fail, you're going to get fifth. They know, you don't have to tell them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you are living in the present time now. I'm telling you what will happen in the future, but Allah says, you are in the present. Edit it now. Prepare it now so you'll be proud of what you will bring. You know it. That's the time now to change. There is no, if, you, if you wait till the event starts, you're not going to be happy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to edit all our good deeds and increase it so we can meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while we're very proud. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives oath. فَلَا أُقْسِمُ بِالْخُنَّسِ Oath, when Allah uses oath, He's talking to very stubborn people. People who are skeptics, fighting the messenger, accusing him of all sorts of bad things. So Allah Himself defends the messenger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَا أُقْسِمُ بِالْخُنَّسِ الْجَوَارِ الْكُنَّسِ I swear by the khunnas. And the most beautiful tafsir I've heard about this ayah, <coughs> By the one, someone his name is Dr. Zaghrul Najjar. Dr. Zaghrul Najjar is the president of the, the scientific miracles of the Quran. He's a professor at the university and he's been doing that job for about 50, 60 years. He said Al Khunnas translation is the hiding. If you read the translation, it's hiding, disappearing. And Khunnas coming from cancer, it means sucking, sweeping. Yeah? These two meaning fits exactly the black hole. They call it the giant vacuum cleaner. The giant space vacuum cleaner. The black hole in the sky. They can swallow sun. That's what they eat. They call them the star eaters. They are invisible. No human see them. No human will ever see them. We only by mathematically they say this area is a, a black hole. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I swear by this very powerful creation that is moving in the, in the universe above you, sucking, sweeping galaxies, not human, galaxies, which is billions of times bigger than our own galaxies, being sucked by this creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah then says, وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا asas." I swear by the night when it darkens, who, create, who, who moves the earth around, turned around so the night can come? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his power. And then he says, وَالصُّبْحِ إِذَا تَنَفَّسِ And who brings the morning every day? It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not human power, not human money, not human knowledge, not human ability. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah is taking four oaths. I swear by this giant creation. I swear by the night that you see every day. I swear by the morning you see every day. On what? What is all this oath? إِنَّهُ لَقَوْلُ رَسُولٍ كَرِيمٍ That this Qur'an in your hand, it is the words of a honored, noble messenger. Wait a minute, the messenger here is Jibreel. It's the angel Gabriel, messenger from Allah to Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. So this Qur'an is the word of Jibreel. <coughs> it's the speech of Allah. He spoke it to Jibreel, and Jibreel came and transferred it, passed it on to Muhammad. Yeah? You know, the Imam always say, you know? It's not Qawli, it's not his speech, but it's the Quran and the Hadith. But because he transferred it to us, he says Qawl. Qawl is the words. I use my, yeah? So Jibreel alayhi salam, the noble messenger from Allah, spoke to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam what Allah told him to say. Yeah? Innahu, this Quran you have certainly is the words of a noble angel. You remember the last surah? It says, في صحف المكرمة مرفوعة المطهرة بأيدي سفرة كرام. 
Karim here, Karam there. Yeah? Noble angels. This this record, this Quran is in the hand of noble angels. Allah chose the noblest of them, the best of them to give the Quran to the Prophet. So when we read the Quran, when we read the Quran, we are receiving it from the Prophet. And the Prophet received it from Jibreel, and Jibreel received it from Allah. We are on one end, Allah is on the other side. We are absolutely on the same path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Listening to the speech of Allah Himself. Yeah? So the Sahaba used to say, Allah speaks to us. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's speech. And we have it in the book, Qala Allah ta'ala. Allah, the Most High, say. And then we read the ayah. So, إِنَّهُ لَقَوْلُ رَسُولٍ كَرِيمٍ No doubt, it is the word of a noble messenger. But he's bringing us very, very valuable message. If you send something valuable, you need someone to look after it, protect it. Allah says, ذِي قُوَّةٍ He is mighty. He is very powerful. He can't be beaten by any other creation to take the message from him or to distort it or to change it. He is very, very strong very powerful to bring that message as it is delivered to the Prophet the quwa where in the dil arsh he is stationed by the arsh of Allah he is on the highest ranking place he is not just a normal angel he is it's not a temporary job it is permanent for him he is at the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is in the highest place that any creation can reach and then, Ameen. Oh, yeah, Makin. Makin, it means he is stationed there, not temporary. Not temporary. Muta. He is obeyed there. He have authority there also, Jibreel alayhi salam. He have authority over the other angel because they say, if you in a lower class, and you have power in a lower class, then you can be obeyed because you're in a lower class. But if you go up in a higher class, the all high class also, maybe you'll get, maybe you're not obeyed there. You know, when the board sit around the table, they're all the same. But when one of the board come to the factory floor, oh, everybody listen, everybody obey. Allah says, no, Jibreel is obeyed in the highest ranking place, he's also muta. Thamma, there. Yeah? I mean, you can you can't get more honest than this. You can't get more honest than this. He is honest, he transferred the message absolutely 100 percent as Allah told him to transfer to the Prophet. Yeah? Allah's talking to the skeptics, those who say, well, you know so many things about the Prophet. So Allah says, This is honoring message came in an honored hand by noble angels. Strong angels that is obeyed next to Allah subhanahu wa throne and he is trustworthy and honest. And then Allah says, well, Muhammad sallallahu wa ma sahibukum bi majnoon. Listen people, Muhammad sallallahu is not insane. He is sahibukum. Sahib, sahib, it means you know very well. Sahib, they say, muqaraba and muqarana. Sahib is near you, is close to you, you know him very well. And muqarana, it means he is from you. Same job, same age, same language. So he's not suddenly he came from a different planet. Muhammad sallallahu was living there for 40 years. 40 years. So they know him very well. They know his lineage, they know his tribe, they know his job, they know character, personality, everything about him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, how can suddenly you say, you accuse him by being insane? How can you do that? وَلَقَدْ رَآهُ بِالْأُفْقُ الْمُبِينَ Absolutely, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have seen Jibreel on the horizon, the clear horizon. When we say the horizon, we say as far as your eye can see on both sides. If you go out in, in the open, and as far as your eye can see, in this side and this side, that's the horizon. When the Prophet ﷺ received Jibreel for the first time in the cave, and Jibreel told him, Iqra, 
Iqra' three times and then he read to him Surah Al-Alaq. The Prophet ﷺ came down from the cave, came down from the mountain, going back home, and he looks up in the sky, he could not see the sky. He could not see the sky anywhere he looked. All he could see is part, is just the real. The angel Jibreel in his real form. When he came to him in the cave, he was a human being form. Jibreel in his real form, can't imagine it. When I read this and hear the Prophet ﷺ look up in the sky, in the whole horizon, everywhere he looks, and he sees Jibreel, then I think, I look up in the sky and the sun is like a, is like a $10 or $5 or $2 coin. <laughs> this is one sun which is a million times bigger than our earth. Jibreel must be billions of times bigger than the sun. How big is he? And that is the creation of Allah. That is a slave of Allah. They say when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives command, Jibreel is terrified. Jibreel becomes like an old cloth. From fear, the king is giving order. And he is making sure that everybody listen and obey. You know, they, have, they say, Israfil, another angel, he will be the one that will blow in the trumpet. He will announce the end of the, of the universe. Very powerful angel. He will announce, Allah give him the task, your job is one thing. You will press the button <laughs> to end this whole thing. They say he is bound down for the last how many billion years waiting for that command to come. He's waiting just not to miss. And these are angels that are very mighty, powerful. And look at us human beings. Allah will command us thousand times and we still disobey and we still argue and still debate and still lazy. We still follow our own desires, still follow our own greed. Yeah? So we, listen, we learn from this that no matter how powerful anything you see, anything you read about, it is creation of Allah, it is a slave of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to understand. So Allah described the Prophet ﷺ. You know him very well, he said, he is the honest, trustworthy. He is the most kind human ever lived. He cares for the orphan and the widows and the needy and even the animals. ﷺ. He cared for everything. They know him very well. And they say, crazy. They say the Prophet ﷺ, Majnoon. How can somebody is that sensitive, that kind, that successful, that polite? And you still call him Majnoon? We know Majnoon, he is scared of If you see someone crazy in the street, you will run away from him. They say nobody come near the Prophet ﷺ except they loved him. Nobody goes near him and come to know him, they loved him even more. Opposite any of us, opposite of any human being, any human being, the closer you get to them, the more fault you will find, the more issues they will discover. But Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the closer you learn about him, the closer you just fall in love with him. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allah says, "Wama huwa ala al-ghayb bidanim." Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he is not holding information from you. Whatever he receives, he gives. Dana, dana, it means he's cheap. He's holding back. Allah says, Muhammad is, وسلم, he is telling you exactly what he gets. He's not holding back anything. He is absolutely transparent, open, honest. He's just whatever he gets from revelation, he just gave it to you. Not like any human being also. You know, human being now, nowadays we know it. People will give you demo. They give you a demo of the app. And if you like it, you pay. They give you a trailer. They give you a preview. They, will, yeah, they give you a few chapters of the book. What Muhammad Sallallahu have is the best treasure, the Quran. And he just gave it to them. If he's like any of them, he would have held back. It's okay, I'll save some for tomorrow. <laughs> Samura, what, uh, I will finish it today? No, 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 I'll keep it for tomorrow. But Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whatever he gets from the revelation, he will call them out and read. And advise. And tell them. Allah is with the name. This Qur'an 
It's not a speech, it's not a word, it's not advice from shaitan. You will find absolutely only goodness in it, only beauty in it, only mercy and care in it. فَأَيْنَ تَذْهَبُونَ this is the question of really you find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's anger in it. Where are you going to go? Allah is asking that question to everyone that reads the Quran. Where are you going to go? The Quran is here. Why are you seeking guidance in everything else? Islam is here. Why are you turning away from Islam? You're Muslim. Where is the prayer? Where is the Quran? Where is the mosque? Where is... This question is for us also. Ayna tadhabun. Allah is calling you. Why are you turning away? When Allah says, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allah is great. Allah is great. If Allah is great in your heart, it's time to pray. Allah says, In huwa illa dhikrun lil alameen. This Quran is a reminder for all people from all nations. That's it. Quran is a reminder. It's not new. Re Mind, I will never remind you with something you don't know. If I remind you, you already know it. I'm just reminding you. Brother, you got the appointment at 8 o'clock. Remember? I'm reminding you. Allah called the Quran, reminder. Every human being is programmed. They have operating system. Allah put in their genes, in their, in their soul, that they should be good. They should be kind. They should obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah says, this Qur'an is only a reminder. It's not going to force anybody to do right or wrong. It's a reminder and it's up to them to choose. But for whom? Whom will benefit from that reminder? لِمَنْ شَاءَ مِنْكُمْ أَنْ يَسْتَقِيمُ For whoever make a strong decision. Strong, willing decision. شَاءَ Willing. Insha'Allah we say. We say, insha'Allah, if Allah will. And here Allah says, if you will. لِمَنْ شَاءَ مِنْكُمْ This reminder, this Qur'an will benefit those of you who will. Don't blame anybody. If you have a strong will to find out about Allah, to learn about Allah, to obey Him and to do good deeds, to get closer to Him, to win Jannah and to be saved from all the horror as being mentioned in all this ayat, Allah says, have a strong will now. Make decision now. Strong commitment now. To do what? Yastaqeem. To put your act together. That's what it is. This Quran will benefit those who will have a strong commitment to put their act together. Say, look, I'm kidding myself here. I'm kidding myself. I'm not donating enough. I'm not reading Quran enough. I'm not praying on time. I'm not helping the community. I'm not... You have to put the act together now so you can present something to Allah, remember? So you can edit that presentation that you're going to show to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah says and finish the surah, وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهُ رَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ Allah says, وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهُ رَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ It means, what other thing you want? Except what Allah wants for you. What will you ever want that will be better than what Allah wants for you? وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ You're going to will for something. إِلَّا مَا أَنْ يَشَعَرَ اللَّهَ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ What you're going to will, what you're going to wish for, what you're going to plan and choose better than Allah chose for you. Look at the, 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 the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, look, come on. What else is there? Allah is saying, what else is there? Anything you want, amount to nothing. Anything you have will amount to nothing. Except what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose for us. And guides for us. And told us to do. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to do increasing good deed. And to increase in knowledge and in piety and righteousness. And protect us and protect our families. Protect our children. And have mercy on us and our families and our mothers and our fathers. Our children, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to establish a strong community. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fill this mosque with righteous, pious, knowledgeable people that will teach us and benefit us and make us increase in Iman every single day. Ameen. Ameen. Jazakum Allah khairan. Subhanakallah. Alhamdulillah. Ashadu Allah. Ashadu Allah. Ashadu Allah. Ashadu Allah. Ashadu Allah.